Yes, I love technology, but not as much as you, you see. But I still love technology, always and forever. This is a PI Advice Podcast. Yeah, boy! What's going on, everybody? I feel like we just talked. If you uh, heard episode 46, you know that I'm actually recording both of these things on the same exact day. It's all right. I like committing to Tech Tuesday. I look forward to it. And I hope you guys do, too. Just gives me an extra day to kind of like, okay, I know for sure I'm going to do it this day. It's going to happen. Here we are. So anyways, uh, yeah. Got just a few stories to talk about today. Uh, not a lot has happened in the 12 hours since I last uh, posted uh, the podcast. Um, but uh, So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and get right into these, these cool stories here. So one thing happened is, is Google uh, puts out this thing. It says they're encrypting, uh, they're encrypting Gmail between data centers now. Apparently, uh, the NSA was tapping in. In between uh, a message, so in between data centers, supposedly um, they were getting in there and, and and pulling email out. Now this is, I think this was posted back last year. And what else? Also, the what something else I read was is you know I, I talked about redundancy. Uh, I think uh, a couple podcasts ago with like Google Drive, and I told you that sometimes they'll. Um, They'll make copies of information from one location on another location in case that location fails. They have it backed up somewhere else. Well, apparently that's where some of the NSA NSA was getting some of their information was this this redundancy area that they considered like old information. Well, really, it's not really old. It's just backed up. Anyway, so Google has made a big point to increase their uh, security and encrypting now encrypting basically. From anywhere you email from, doesn't matter. It's going to be encrypted just to make it harder for the uh, government to go ahead and tap into that. And that was uh, posted in The Verge. And I will post a link in the show notes. The show notes are important because that's where you get to click on smarter people than me and find out what they actually wrote about it. I'm just drawing your attention to it. Um, another thing that came out was really cool. It's, it's an Actually, it's, a, it's an iPhone app. And, um, you know, there's a lot of chat apps coming out lately. Um, you know, and they all kind of say, oh, we can do this and we can do that. And this one kind of like subtly came out. It's called Fire Chat. And this app allows you to text message without a cell phone signal. So you basically, it's letting you do, you're like, what are you talking about? How are you going to text message? Uh, basically, it lets you use the Bluetooth functionality in your phone and lets you use Wi-Fi too. But I think the more impressive thing is the the Bluetooth functionality. Um, And what it does is it sends a signal out, and I guess it has a range of about 30 feet. Again, you have to be using the the Fire Fire Chat app. It's free, by the way. It's it's only for uh, uh, iPhone users. It's for the iPhone, the uh, iPad, and the i something else. Um, Anyways, uh, iPhone, iPad, iPod. There you go. Um, so anyway, so basically it connects to another user. So I've got the app on my phone. Oh, I got to use my little, my iPhone here. And there's somebody else with an iPhone using that app as well. I can connect to them with, with it. If they're in range of Bluetooth, right? I can connect to them and, and start a conversation, uh, text messaging. Then let's say somebody that's 30 feet from them has an app and they want to connect. Now I can text message that third person because I have a signal going connecting number two guy to number three guy and so on. And so this can go on forever. That's pretty amazing technology if you ask me. Did you did you ask me? I'm just telling you. It's amazing. Um anyways, uh yeah, I just I just was kind of blown away by this and and so what they're really um they're really selling this to like people like at ball games. If you want to like, you know, chat about the game with random strangers, but you know, you got a, a lot of people in one area, you know, and you kind of have a little party chat with people you don't even know. Um, apparently you can also have one-on-one chats. You can, um, you can share pictures, uh, which is, which is cool. 
No, I tra- I, I uh, went from the ne- uh, the iPhone to the the Nexus Five, and and maybe someday I'll get to talk about that. I think right away you can already see that the reason why I picked. I mean, it's just it's like a behemoth phone over here. Anyways, um, uh, anyway, so so how does how I was thinking to myself, you know, in what situation? Can I use this app if I was to, you know, in, in, in an investigation of some sort? And you know what? The, the, what I've come to the conclusion is uh, the times you'll probably use this are far and few between. But when you want to use it, I think it'd kind of come in handy. Uh, say you're in a location, you maybe you're working a two-man investigation, and maybe you're not trying to you know, act as if you know each other. Maybe you're trying to watch somebody from two different, you know, lo- you know, relatively short locations. And, um, and, and there's maybe just not, you know, cell phone coverage in there for some reason. Um, then you can communicate with your other investigator and, you know, like chit chat it back and forth. And, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I, my mind is very, not very creative when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I'm sure there's 30 people out there listening to this going, I could use it for this and this and this and this and feel free to message me and give me more ideas on how you can use this. I, I, I know this could be used for us um, as investigators. I, I just have a limited imagination. Um, but, I, you know, at the very least, you just might want to have it on hand. Maybe, you know, maybe you and your people that you work with frequently, if you're, uh, you know, if you have a team, it wouldn't hurt to have Um so I don't know. I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. Like, again, you know, they say, I, you know, especially like, I mean, I've worked cases where I've been in the woods before. Typically, I'm by myself, though, during those times. But, you know, you're not going to have signals out there and you want to communicate with maybe somebody, you know, um, you know, on a case. That might be the time to do it. 30 feet, though, not not a huge range. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I would just get it. It's free. So just get it and, and see if you like it. it. Might come in handy one day. Just just you never know. It's like one of those things you just ha- you have just in case. Okay. I, I, apparently nobody wants it, so I'm not going to sell it anymore. Um, the last thing I'm going to share with you guys is I read on The Verge, and they made it really dramatic. They said Google plans to kill Google Voice and integrate the features into the Google Hangout system. Um, if anybody's used Google Hangouts, it's pretty cool. Um uh, you can do like video conferencing. You can do it on your phone. You can. Uh, it's kind of like uh, FaceTime in, in many regards on the iPhone. Um, you, and it's text message, and you can, you know, it, it, it's it, they've done a good job with it. I think it's integrated into Google Plus now too. Somehow, I don't know. It's they've done a lot of con- consolidation with with their apps, and apparently they're going to consolidate again. And so when I first read it. You know, if anybody you okay, does anybody even know what this is? Let me just tell you real quick. I I, I don't want to assume that everybody knows what Google Voice is. Uh, way way back, uh, several years ago, Google came out with these uh, phone numbers, and uh, they just they gave them out for free, and um and you could you could choose you know what numbers you wanted. Like you know, if you wanted a phone number in L.A. and you lived in Washington, you could have it. You could have you know anywhere in the United States, uh, with the, you know area code. Basically, I'm saying. Um, and, uh, anyway, so you could have these phones and then, so then you can give out this phone number to somebody. It's not your real phone number. It's this Google number, right? And this Google number, you call that, they, they call your Google number. The Google number routes it to your phone, to your real phone, phone number. And, um, when you answer the phone, it'll say, uh, you know, you've got a voice, you, somebody's calling you. It's like an automatic message in it. And they'll say, uh, you've got a call from, and then the guy will be like, Joseph Evans. And then, do you know, do you want to answer this? press one. If, uh, if you want to send a voicemail, press two, if you want to, you know, or whatever. And you can actually listen to them as they leave a voicemail and you can actually jump in during the call if you wanted to, um, you know, as they're leaving a message. Um, uh, most of the time I just throw them to voicemail if they, you know, client doesn't matter. I just send them right there. Um, anyways, um, uh, so anyway, so I, and, and the, the neat thing that they had on this was they had an app. So, you know, you could check your messages on there. You could dial out. And from what I understand, it was dialing out, um, on, on VoIP, a uh, voice over internet protocol, which is, I think basically you, the phone call was going through data. It wasn't going through your minutes, your phone minutes when you called out. 
Very cool, right? Very cool. So I guess they're uh, one one version insinuated that they're getting rid of Google Voice altogether. I I use it for my business, so literally the phone number for my Google Voice is on my business cards, which it's kind of you know if they mess with that, it's going to piss me off because now I got to figure out what I'm going to do because I'm not going to spend you know sixty bucks on a business line or something crazy like that, or and I don't like home phones, so. I don't know. I'm going to have to figure out something else. And if I do, you'll probably hear about it because you're going to probably do try to figure out the same thing. Because I know a lot of I know a lot of business owners use Google Voice. I know a lot of investigators in particular use Google Voice. They don't want to give out their real number sometimes. And so anyways, so we'll keep an eye on this. Apparently, this is supposed to go down the next few months. I've heard May, um, but I guess we'll just see what happens. Hopefully, you know, they don't get scrap it all together. I, I'm hoping they wouldn't. That would make a lot of people mad because a lot of people have these phone numbers. Hopefully, just you know, they just integrate it into this, and they don't you know ruffle too many feathers. I will have the original uh, story on there. Um, I guess the original story came from Nine Two Five Google. They had some inside people, and that is about it. Actually, you know, before I go, I got a. Uh, I mean, literally, probably twenty minutes ago, I got an email from a guy asking about remote cameras. With, uh, and he used a fancy word for it, um, remote cameras with, uh, let me see if I can find it here, PTZ control. Now, um, if you guys have ever done any loss prevention, uh, the, the controllers, they have cameras in, in some of these like uh, in like um, big flagship, flagship stores. I worked at, you know, for the Gap. Uh, and, and Banana Republic more specifically, but I, w- many times I'd go to San Francisco and I'd go to their flagship store there and they'd have fancy cameras to where the uh, the cameras you could move on a joystick. You could switch between cameras and, and those cameras would move around in that area. You could see anything in that area, you know, 360 or whatever. And he was asking about cameras that did the same thing, but they I'm, I'm assuming he was referring to, I go to, um, you know, I go to my case, so, you know, some residential area. I pop up my um, my remote camera and I can control it with a joystick. Now, I I don't know if there's anything out there and I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't do a whole lot of research, but I have a big audience and I'm assuming that maybe somebody knows of something like that. If it exists, if it does, message me uh, through my contact page at the Pride Investigator Advice website or um, you know, or email me at piadvicehq at gmail. Uh, dot com and uh and just let me know just let me know if you know and if you do i'll pass it on to him and uh, and let him know um that's i I figured if there is something out there like that it's pretty fancy and it's pretty expensive because i know that the the domes that they had in 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 the gap were pretty pricey um and and generally speaking and then you know they were breaking down and then it would be very expensive to fix so I don't know that this would be if it is if it does exist. I don't know that the average private investigator is going to be looking for it, um, but it would it would be nice. It would be nice to have. So, anyways, um, I you know just thought I'd just throw it out there and and see if we could find anything on that. Uh, see if I can get some outro music here. It's like the worst thing on this thing. Um, yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, this is Tech Tuesday. Kind of you know it's kind of short, and I'm sorry, but. That's all I got for you guys today. So, I have to send you out here with some music. Pretty lame, right? I do have uh, another podcast in the hopper. I got a news one coming up. So, you know, I know this one's short, but there wasn't a lot of news. So, I got no dukes, guys. I got no dukes. Anyways, uh, have a great night, morning, whatever. Have a great day at work. And we'll talk again soon. All right? We'll have some cool stuff eventually here. See you.